Sometimes getting into character is more than just hair and wardrobe. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Harry Potter actors who sound nothing like their characters. Because how much of that is prosthetics on Voldemort? Actually, <laughs> to be honest, on Voldemort, not so much. A lot of painting and... Oi, oi, oi. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've chosen 10 of the actors in the Harry Potter series whose real-life voices are a far cry from their characters. We will only be considering those in the Harry Potter original run, not the Fantastic Beasts franchise. A wand was taken from you upon your arrival at the Ministry today, Mrs. Catamole. Is this that wand? Number 10. Helena Bonham Carter – Bellatrix Lestrange I want to have a little conversation with this one. Girl to girl! Bellatrix is more than a little off her rocker. A pure-blood zealot, the Mad Witch took pleasure in tormenting muggles and muggle-borns. Spending years locked up in Azkaban only increased her madness, and fittingly, her voice sounds about as unhinged as she is. While not cackling maniacally, Voldemort's most faithful lieutenant has a strong, hard accent. In real life, actress Helena Bonham Carter has a lovely, soft accent. This is quite artistic, so he did the tree and everything, which looked all right, but then as you got closer, you realised there were some zombies and dead babies and... Unlike the screeching highs of her on-screen counterparts, her natural speaking voice is calm and gentle, about as far from Bellatrix Lestrange as you can get. But no, there's not actually... Everybody seems to make us more interesting than we actually are. Number 9. Imelda Staunton – Professor Dolores Umbridge I'll do this! Actually, I can. Is there any character in the Wizarding World more hated? Not only is Professor Dolores Umbridge a sadistic psychopath, she's smug about it. The self-righteous Ministry Plan's voice is high and so sweet it's practically cavity-inducing, belying the sinister person underneath. Let us preserve what must be preserved. Perfect what can be perfected. Imelda Staunton, the actress who absolutely nailed the villainous professor's detestable nature, speaks with none of the sugary insincerity of her character. She sounds like someone's mum, with a regular tenor and sensible tone of voice. That's the mouse. There'll be, there's a mouse walking up my arm. Not just a talented film actress, she can sing too and has showcased her talents on stage. We'd like to see Umbridge do that. Some people can be content. Number 8. Gary Oldman – Sirius Black Are you going to kill me, Harry? Like his cousin Bellatrix, Sirius did a stint in the wildly inhumane wizarding prison, Azkaban. When he first escaped, his voice had an edge of madness. However, after a few years away from the daily threat of having his soul sucked out from his mouth by a ghoul, his way of speaking mellowed. What matters is the part we choose to act on. That's who we really are. This might be closer to Gary Oldman's true voice, but it's hard to say. The actor is famously gifted with accents, and having lived in America for so long, he has admitted that he has lost much of his English accent. In interview, Oldman's voice tends to take on a little of everything. I think one got into acting in the first place, it's a, as I've always called it, a sort of antidote to self-loathing. Number 7. Dame Emma Thompson – Professor Sybil Trelawney Professor Trelawney, together we shall cast ourselves into the future! Professor Trelawney is, allegedly, constantly peeking into either the past or the future, which might explain why she doesn't really ever seem present. The flighty divination prof is grandiose and ostentatious, as is her way of speaking, often making sweeping gestures and proclamations. Her wacky and jumpy antics are quite a bit different from actress Emma Thompson's more reserved style. Oh, God, nice I'm to exhausted see you again. now. I'm exhausted. For, thank you for coming back. Oh, I, I'm so glad and happy to see you. Although she got a start in comedy, in recent years, she has made a name for herself in more dramatic roles. The poised and elegant actress's voice has none of the panicky energy of her character. They're called Sir. Sir, whoever it is. Right. And Dame is different, isn't it? It's kind of, right. here's the Dame. Number six, Jason Isaacs, Lucius Malfoy. Lucius Malfoy. We meet at last. Forgive me. Your scar is legend. 
Some characters you just love to hate, and Draco's dad Lucius Malfoy is just that guy. Everything about him is slick and serpentine, from his style to his manners to his snide way of speaking. His pride takes a serious blow after his botched mission at the Ministry of Magic, and he becomes even more snake-bellied than before. In real life, actor Jason Isaacs has none of the haughty sneering or disdainful tones of Mr. Malfoy. I mean, when people start watching it, they can't stop, and so many people watched all eight hours. The contrast is most stark when interviewed in costume, when it becomes the clearest that the icy arrogance is just a very well-affected character. Voldemort completely upends him. Voldemort is, it couldn't be more contemptuous. Number five, Julian Glover, Aragog. I never saw any part of the castle but the books in which Hagrid kept me. While he's not on screen long, Aragog certainly left an impression. What ten-foot talking spider wouldn't? In the dark of the Forbidden Forest, the massive arachnid is predominantly heard rather than seen. Goodbye. Even still, it might surprise you to learn that the actor that provided the voice of Hagrid's creepiest pet was Julian Glover. Glover is perhaps most famously known for his roles as General Maximilian Veers in The Empire Strikes Back and Grand Maester Pycelle in Game of Thrones. The growly voice of the Acromantula is nothing like this trained actor's clean, precise manner of speaking. A young man who had applied to the Prince's Trust for help. He started off with uh, a film called <laughs> Gangster Kittens. Number four, Richard Harris, Professor Albus Dumbledore. I have a few start of term notices I wish to announce. The first years, please note that the Dark Forest is strictly forbidden to all students. The original Professor Dumbledore was exceptionally soft-spoken with a distinct British accent. His voice seemed to barely carry above a whisper, but as headmaster still commanded a considerable amount of authority. The House Cup needs a warning, and the points stand thus. In real life, this softness was in due part to the illness that would result in actor Richard Harris's passing. In life, the Irish actor had a quick and lively way of speaking, and in fact, in his younger years, had the reputation for being something of a hellraiser. We're sure the marauders would have approved. But, but we'll see, the best Irish food is Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Ray Fiennes. Lord Voldemort. Shall I reveal what really happened that night 13 years ago? Shall I divulge how I truly lost my power? Taking that parcel tongue gift way too far, the big bad of the series is as snake-like as they come. After years of alterations via the dark arts, Voldemort shed his life as Tom Riddle as a serpent does its old skin. Aside from the physical changes, Voldemort's voice became quite raspy, hissing even. Just as the actor is almost unrecognizable as his on-screen character, so too does Ray Fiennes sound completely different. Anyway, I passed by this little child. I just looked at this boy. <gasps> he has burst into tears. Oh. <laughs> Born to a well-connected family, he has a deep, cultured English voice, perfectly suited for the Shakespearean productions he has so often taken roles in. That's about three years ago, so I, I, have, I feel I have really strong personal connections with with Russia. Number two, Toby Jones, Dobby the House Elf. Dobby will always be there for Harry Potter. Are you saying you can operate in and out of this room? Could you take us with you? Of course, uh, I'm an elf. With a faithfulness that bordered on worship, Dobby the House Elf was one of Harry's most steadfast allies throughout the series. A diminutive creature, his voice was high and piping, just as you'd imagine a small magical being's might be. You shall not harm Harry Potter! Like Aragog, we never see the voice actor who brought him to life, but behind the well-meaning elf was Toby Jones. A terrific character actor capable of doing multiple accents, Jones has seemingly made his way into every major franchise of the early 21st century, from Harry Potter to the MCU to the rebooted Jurassic Park franchise. From London, his neutral speaking voice is about as standard British as they come. Because no one is fully in control except the viewer. Number one, Ian Hart, Professor Quirinus Quirrell. Turn around in the dungeon! Even Quirrell doesn't sound like Quirrell. 
When Harry first meets the dark arts prof with the worst case of dandruff around, he is timorous and stuttering. He later discovers that this nervous tick was an affectation to avert suspicion, seeing as he had Voldemort dug into his cranium like another and absolutely worst kind of tick. Kill him! Outside of Hogwarts, Ian Hart sounds nothing like Quirrell, be he edgy or full of bravado. The accent is completely different, and you'd be forgiven for thinking it was an entirely different person. Once, you, once you're in the club, once you've gotten admittance to the club, all of a sudden, auditions which you could not have gotten in a bazillion years. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.